Hey everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about one of my favorite applications, and that is Adobe Spark Post. And that is because I've taken my 20 years of Photoshop experience, and I've come to realize that the power of this app is that everybody from age six to 60 plus is able to become a designer and start and quickly create content around what they're passionate about. I think that that is a mission critical skill for anyone right now, whether you are a student in kindergarten, high school, college, or whether you were professional and never considered yourself to be the person that might be able to create content for your business, today is the day that we are going to deep dive with that. So stick with me and we're going to deep dive into Adobe Spark Post right now. Hey everybody, I hope you're going to enjoy the video that we're about to run through in this deep dive around Adobe Spark Post. If you are interested in being a subscriber, I would highly suggest you hit that little bell below. Subscribe to the channel, like the video if you find value in it, but most importantly, be part of the conversation, be part of the Educated by Design community. So let's get going. All right, so we're gonna deep dive into the mobile app. You could use this on your iOS or your Android device. It also has a web app, right? But what we're gonna focus on right now is we're gonna focus on the iOS app. And there's two reasons why we're gonna do that. So as you get into the platform, you're gonna see a couple different things that you could do. The first is you could start creating right now with that green plus sign. You could also use templates to get inspiration and then you can go to the post that you've already created. Now, I think that it's amazing that it starts with the templates because one of the biggest obstacles in design is that blank canvas, that white space where you just don't know where to start. And so for you to take a look at a template that you think already looks great and figure out how to reverse engineer it, hack it apart, and make sense of it, is what's going to get you to become a better designer. So even myself, when I'm creating content, a lot of the times I'm gonna look at the templates that are in the Adobe Spark community just to get some inspiration. And then you can take it apart and you can make sense of it however you'd like. But I think it's important for us to know. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to show you an example from a collaboration I did with Adobe where we created different lessons, pulling from a Khan Academy video to be able to empower learners to create content around the content that they're learning. So we're gonna take a look right here at this eukaryotic cell. So the way that I created this was I was trying to figure out how could I capture the different parts of a cell in a memorable way. And I think it's memorable because I'm choosing color. I think it's memorable because of the way that I structure the fonts. I think it's memorable by the way that I put icons into the design. And then of course, how does that all relate together? So one of the things that I think is super important is for you to understand how to be inspired by different types of design, as I said before. So when you take a look at something like avant-garde, right? So that was sort of my general inspiration for this project was, hey, can I create some sort of design that has this sort of like timeless or from the past type design? And maybe the students don't even realize that, but the way that you choose color, the flatness, the types of fonts, all of this has a meaning, it has a depth. And I think that it's, you know, something like you know, choosing a font, right? If you if you have the word love and the font is, you know, red and it's dripping, right? That might come across as something a little bit angry, a little bit scary. So you have to be aware of how exactly you are going to create the content so that it's intentional and that it is just, I think, like all around focused, right? So one of the things that uh, we're gonna deep dive into with this is, right, we're gonna edit it. So we're gonna get into this design and we're gonna take a look at a couple different things that I like to do. So one of the things that is a little challenging in Adobe Spark is being able to like really layer and create some really advanced types of relationships between different design elements. But by showing you how to do that right now, I think you're gonna be surprised at what you're able to accomplish. So one of those things is, take a look at this cell icon, right? So this cell icon has another circle right on top of it. And so if I move this around, you're gonna see, sure enough, that there is a additional design 
right over there. And one of the things that um, you know is a little bit challenging is how are you gonna line that design up, right? That little piece right there. So that piece is just an oval and I was lucky enough that when I searched a oval that's just the outline and not a fill-in, I said, well, hopefully when I shrink and manipulate this oval down, it's going to actually match perfectly over that center oval, that nucleolus of the cell. And sure enough, it matched. So what I was able to do is, I was able to change that color by simply clicking on the color option, clicking on that little toggle switch icon that's on top of the color. And then I was able to use my eyedropper and then I was able to select the same color as the background. Now, I could have done that with the pink, right? Because the pink also has that relationship with the overlap from the cell to that box. But when I looked at the way in which the design functioned, and I was trying to sort of see how exactly was I going to create that overlap. So I thought to myself, you know what? There has to be, you know, not just like one single way to go about it, but when I saw it, I said, okay, I have the pink, okay? I have the pink, but if I go to the orange, right? For some reason, it just comes out of the design in in a better way. I don't know how to describe it, but sometimes there's just the movement of colors, the movement of the design. There was something about the way in which it moved from the orange at that sort of smaller point than the broader point of the pink. But that is really the focus of what I was trying to go with when I was thinking of that. So we have the design there and that way of looking at how do we have things overlapping as well. So one of the things about this is there isn't a really sophisticated layers feature in Adobe Spark Post, so you gotta get creative. So for example, over here, when you take a look at uh, the nucleus, right? So the nucleus, I actually have it as two different text boxes and all I did was I clicked on it and then I duplicated it, right? I clicked that duplicate button and then I was able to just simply double click on it, change the, uh, the, the letters from the first part of the word to the last letters of the word and it kept the same font, same color, same size and I thought that, that was just a really nice way to then give that ability to overlap. So it was a little bit of an overlap, right? Nothing too crazy. Same thing here with the DNA. I wanted to have the DNA with that very thin part of the vertical right side of the end. I wanted it to perfectly line up with the Lego piece and right where the solid color goes to just the, the outline uh, and the color from the background. I thought that it would be a really nice way right at that corner to just have the relationship between these pieces work really nice together. And sometimes you just have to hear that said to realize, oh, that was so obvious. That was the logic behind it. And then you can start creating styles like that as well. Same with the ribosomes. I thought, well, I could have ribosomes really small right on top of it and uh, this like like this translator icon where it's like a Google Translate inspired icon. And then I could have the translator of the cell underneath it. But I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I could actually lock in the icon with the words and still allow them to be big, still allow it to be legible, and then be able to have a new type of relationship. Same with the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is that double decker sort of crushing or not really crushing because that's I think like a negative word but it, it's sort of like um, you know hamburger bunning the icon together both by touching it on the top vertical on the bottom with a little bit of break in between the font and the icon. And I think that small little relationships like that, it just makes the design more interesting. And it allows different parts of the icon, different parts of the font, and different parts of the overall design to pop at different times. I think that's just a really, really nice way to go about it. So the other thing that I thought was really interesting is, of course, you know, I have the eukaryotic, I have the cell. So once again, the cell word is separate here and I'm able to get the cell to have the same color as the actual cell icon and have that break together. I'm really into that design relationship where we have that ability to quickly 
uh, I would say, quickly um, sort of get different things to relate and connect to one another. And it's something that I think everybody can do once you just, once again, know about it, that you're aware of it. So when I, when I took that eukaryotic cell word, right, the eukaryotic, so I actually had to go in, I had to go to effect and I had to go into the color and I really had to make sure that I figured out how could I get this to pop? And I thought that, well, if I could create and sort of extend the circle by using the same color, that might be an interesting way to get the designs to relate together. And then just choosing colors, right? I did alternating colors where different colors are going to connect to different sections of this four quadrant design by just allowing the colors to really dictate what is going to pop, what is going to be emphasized with, but that they're gonna, there's going to be a relationship between the color schemes of all of the four areas of the design and then of course the center, right? The other thing was, and I think this is really important, you don't want to have just one font and you don't want to have like eight fonts, right? Or even sometimes three fonts is too much. So here, I really tried to decide, okay, I'm going to have a font for the title because with the titles you get to do whatever you want so that center font that eukaryotic 101 you kind of get that's like a freebie but then in the rest of the design you really have to choose a primary and a secondary font and the secondary font is usually going to be for text and in designs you want to limit the text of course you don't want to have a giant paragraph because it's boring nobody wants to read it so use images and use icons to really tell that story so you have your primary font which is usually for a title or a subtitle and then you're going to have your secondary or in the case here i guess technically tertiary font for the text like the powerhouse of the cell. So you wanted to decide on that and something that's interesting, but of course legible. So if I did like a really fancy cursive, it would be really hard to read and it also wouldn't carry the same style. Okay, the other thing is that if you notice these very subtle in the yellow and orange area of cells that are just a little bit darker than the existing or the main orange and yellow. So I did that because I felt like it was a little bit empty. And you want to be careful with that because you don't always want to fill up the entire space with imagery, icon, contents, whatever. Sometimes we call it dead space or, or you know, white space if it's white, but just absence, right? And sometimes that's good. So I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and share this out. So once again, thank you for watching. Until next time, let's create something that helps us build our creative capacity.